What are some of the weirdest things you've ever happened across in the woods? Some friends I had as a child all talked of odd or inexplicable things they found in the woods together, like abandoned cars in the midst of large trees, much older than their make and model, which would have no way to get in or out from betwixt such trees, or a tree knot stuffed with human hair. All I ever found were some dice and old shoes. Was fishing in a river in the bush, heard a noise to look over, and a doe was no less than six inches away from me, just staring at me. I waved at her and just said howdy. She sniffed and snorted and just walked away. Had other odd run-ins in those woods, like hiding from what I almost certain was two police officers, checking the smoke coming from our campfire. Felt like some real Metal Gear Solid 3 type stuff. A few years ago, I found a rather modern looking abandoned staircase. It looked like it was made in the 70s and left over from some type of mall maybe. I don't know why it was A, deep in the woods, and B, left there and not destroyed with the rest of the building. I thought this was something special, but after Googling, I figured this is apparently some kind of famous phenomena or meme. Weirdest thing I found was a stack of newspapers from 1984 next to a trash pile. This was in 2005. I could actually separate the pages and they were wet, but they had not decayed. In between some of them, there was a piece of paper that had a bunch of writing that I thought was Hebrew. I took a picture with my phone, a top of the line Motorola razor. I thought if I tried to pull the paper out, I would just tear it up. But I took the picture, and then I just forgot about it. A few weeks later, I just randomly remembered it, so I decided to visit one of the synagogues here in town and see if a rabbi could read it. I rode my bike to the one temple I already knew the location of, and I just happened to see an old man and a yarmulke, who I assumed was a rabbi walking to his car. I just went right up to him and was like, Excuse me, sir, do you read Hebrew? He gave me a look like he thought I was trolling him, but... He said, I read a little. So I showed him the picture on my phone and he looked at it for like two seconds and was like, boy, this isn't Hebrew. I was completely dumbfounded by this, but he kept looking at it and said, if I had to guess, I would say this is Thai. Then he looked at it for another couple of seconds and said, honestly, I think this might be Tibetan. I felt dumb and I thanked him and apologized and I just rode back home. I have no idea whatever happened to that picture since. I don't think I ever saved it, and that phone is long gone by now. Besides that, I once found a dog skull. Music used to play in the woods near my parents' house. Flutes and drums kind of thing. What made it weirder was that if you'd wandered towards it, it would eventually move to somewhere behind you. But normally, making a lot of noise and stomping around, or saying anything out loud, caused it to stop. Beyond that, will-o'-wisps every June. They're about the size of a grapefruit, incredibly bright, almost strobe light bright, and never let anyone get too close to them. This happened to my sister when she was about 15. She wouldn't lie about shit like this. She was out in the woods. My siblings and I would play out all the time about half a mile from the house. It was a cool spot to hang because it had a tall, naturally occurring waterfall that fell into a small creek, and it was out far enough to where no one else would ever come out there. My sister was out there just hanging out when she looked at some wet dirt near the creek and saw a human footprint in the sand. She looked closer, and water had filled it and began to dry it, as if the footprint was made less than 30 seconds ago. She left right after seeing this. She didn't care to look around. No, she wasn't barefoot like the footprint was. Weird shit because I too would frequent these woods and would see nothing more than deer. I once found a cave in the middle of nowhere where someone nailed a cross into the wall and the walls were painted with numerous other crosses and weird characters. Also, some Latin sentences. And there were remains of a fireplace. This was quite a bit from the next road or even a major path so someone must have brought all of that stuff there by foot. But for what purpose? I was about 11 or something out of scout camp, 
at about 2 a.m. in the morning. I woke up and needed a piss, but I was also discovering masturbation at that point, and at the time, I had a thing for getting off outside completely naked. I think it was just the risk of getting caught. I mostly grew out of that now. I went a fair bit away from where we were camping, turned my torch off, had a piss, pulled my pants down to my ankles, took my top off, and went at it. I got dressed again, turned my torch on, and there was half a dead rabbit right next to me, which I hadn't saw exactly like pig related. The blood was still wet. I immediately got spooked and rushed away. I briefly looked back and saw approximately two sets of eyes looking back to me, reflection from the torch. I assume I disturbed something feeding, but they were watching me the whole time. Once went up a hike in Door County with my family as a kid. Took a wrong patch and ended up walking for like eight miles by accident. We stopped at a picnic bench in a small clearing at some point, and on the other side of the path from them were these big aquamarine or green tuft ball-like plants. They looked both like moss and lichen at the same time. Think of a full head of broccoli. That's about how big they were. I remember my dad saying not to touch them, and every couple of years, I would get curious about them and try to figure out what kind of plant they were. I could never find anything that looked similar. I once found a deer's spine in a small abandoned aluminum cistern of some kind. I had found bones in the woods before, but it was really weird that it was just the spine and nothing else. It was in a junkyard near a trailer park, so maybe not that unusual. I also found an abandoned cabin. It looked just like a really small modern home with a metal door, vinyl siding, double pane windows and shingles. But the weirdest thing was the foundation. It was built entirely on a wood deck, 10 feet over a seasonal stream, with the door just a couple feet away from the top of the bank. I don't recall seeing any pipes or outhouse, but there were wires leading underground, so it must have had electricity. I was with my younger brother, both adults, and we both thought the whole situation was strange. It was located in an old campground that had been abandoned by the nearby state park. We also found old garbage cans, a small scrap heap, and a concrete shuffleboard court. That was probably the most unexplainable thing I've ever found. Why would someone build such a tiny cabin in such a strange location, with no plumbing and no outhouse? If it was part of the former campground, why was it in such good shape when the area had been abandoned for decades? If it was in use, what was it used for? It was a hundred yard walk through thick forest with no trail from the nearest place to park a car. It was too small and too remote for storage, too underdeveloped for a dwelling, so what was its purpose? Pick related, except there is no pick, is a close example, except there were no windows on the door. The windows weren't curtained, but it was too dark inside to see them from the stream bank, and there was no way to climb up to them. We tried the door, but it was locked. There were some tools and supplies in front of the door, but I don't remember what they were except for a tin of mixed nuts and possibly a hammer. It looked to me like whoever put them there had been there recently because no scavenger would miss a food tin. I live near a large forest and constantly hike in there. Almost every other hike, I spot something that wasn't there before. From harmless things like signs of someone making a fire or making camp or trying to build some silly shelter out of twigs to bizarre or even spooky things. Like last month, I found a place that was overgrown with bushes before. Now someone took down a bunch of young birches, twisted them together into a 10 meter wide wood circle and placed a large boulder in the middle of said circle. My weirdest thing was probably a brain fart I had half a year ago. I was walking through a familiar part of the woods, enjoying nature, being all chill, when my brain started signaling me all of a sudden. Basically, my mind filled with a single thought. Do not look to your right. If you look, you will die. It was out of nowhere, but it was so strong, my neck tensed so much, every muscle in it, that I think I would have not been able to move my head to the right, 
even if I really, really wanted to. I still don't know what it was that scared me so much. I just kept walking as I looked straight in front of me, fearing the very notion of looking to my right. After I walked 500 meters like this, the fear completely went away. I have no idea what scared me so much because, as explained, I didn't see it. Couldn't look there, even if I tried. Maybe there was a scary skeleton hanging from a tree or something. Either way, my brain totally blanks when I think about that evening. I know a part in the woods around here where the air feels really thick and kinda moist, even though there's no body of water anywhere nearby. Hard to describe, but it's noticeably different to breathe compared to normal forest air. In summer, you always get swarmed by all kinds of insects there. And I mean swarmed. I once tried to run, and many followed for like a hundred yards. That's not normal. In the same forest a bit away from there, you will find normal air and a normal amount of insects. It's weird because it's always the same part, and it's like that every summer. I had a similar experience when I was exploring an abandoned campground with my brother. We found a small modern style cabin in the woods, and while we were looking around, I suddenly became afraid that we were in a place we shouldn't be. I didn't say anything and just signaled to my brother that it was time to leave. He seemed to understand immediately. Maybe the expression on my face said something my mouth couldn't. Out in the wilderness, instinct kicks in. A human unconsciously knows certain things that can't be put into words. I've spent long periods of time out in the wilderness, both alone and with friends and family, and I usually become a slightly different person. I'm more alert despite having attention deficit disorder, and more cautious despite being laid back when in the city. Even when I'm with large groups, or perhaps because of them, I become more thoughtful and meditative. I feel like it's my sole responsibility to keep people safe. I can't help but feel that there are things that live in the wild that aren't flesh and blood. Things that most people raised in modern civilization don't notice. I've had a lot of close calls that could have kept me from ever seeing home again. So, maybe, I'm just slightly paranoid. I've talked with others who have had weird things happen while hiking and camping, from strange thoughts and sensations to full-on paranormal phenomena involving animals or suddenly finding themselves lost despite being familiar with the area. Truthfully, nature scares the shit out of me, but despite the risk, I can't help but keep going back for more. I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I just feel like I'm supposed to be out there, no matter what might happen. Honestly, hiking is what turned me from being an atheist. I'm not sure I know what I believe right now. Like, I won't name you a certain god or even a certain belief system, but I just know there's something. And shit like that premonition I had only make this belief stronger. I see you also feel the call. It's good, despite all the scary shit that pops out from time to time. You won't believe how depressed and miserable I was before I started hiking. A few spooky encounters and spooky finds are nothing compared to the benefits. Even if a fucking Sasquatch eats me one day, it will be totally worth it for all the beauty I've seen and all the inner peace i found. Though, I would love to learn one day what sort of things they are. The things that walk the trails alongside you and make your hair stand up. Or make you get lost or do actual good shit, like make you feel relaxed. Few times, I went off trail following a strange feeling as if a calling, but not a verbal one. Like something grabbed me by the soul and pulled me off the trail. I walked almost mechanically, not really caring where I was going. But when I got there, I found a beautiful place, much better than the one I wanted to camp at in the first place. And nothing bad happened. So something just led me to show me a beautiful little clearing with berries and shit. I really want to see them one day these things that cause all those feelings. I was pretty deep in the woods. There's a swimming hole and party spot, but it's pretty much only used on weekends because it's so deep. But 
I was homeschooled, so I had more free time. So as I'm coming up to the swimming hole, I hear someone there already. I sneak up to see who, because, usually, there's no one there on weekdays. I think it might be hikers or a ranger, but it's just some guy. Looked to be around my dad's age at the time. He's naked, and looks like he's taking a bath. Not swimming, but cleaning himself. He gets out and dries off, and then gets dressed up. He's wearing a full businessman suit, dress shoes, and all. He puts his towel in a bag and leaves. Not the way I came, which would bring you back to town, but deeper into the woods. It's a couple of hours to hike to the swimming hole, and you can hike through to another town, but it's a full day's hike. Never saw him again. About 10 to 15 years ago, I used to go to a place called Waterloo Village in northern New Jersey. It was a small rural town settled in the late 1700s which was eventually deserted and became a historic site. Somewhere around the mid-2000s, it lost funding, fell into ruin, and became a ghost town. There was a church at the edge of the village, about a quarter mile before the village itself, which was still maintained and frequented by a small number of people. But the village was otherwise empty, and many of the houses had fallen apart. There was a large water wheel that was still operational, forever churning away despite being long abandoned, and a bridge leading across a river which had broken and could no longer safely be crossed. Standing in this place was amazing, a little forest clearing with a few ancient stone houses, idyllic water features, and complete empty calm, like something out of a medieval fantasy film. It was so beautiful, but also a bit unnerving. I went many times, once even at night, and saw many strange things. One in particular was a house in the woods across the river, which was in especially bad condition. I'll never forget jumping down into the cellar from an outside entrance, and all I saw was a single chair sitting in an empty stone room with several thousand spiders on the ceiling. Another time, I was rummaging through some of the leaves in the woods, and some weird little thing that looked like a tiny snake with piranha's face and teeth, leaped at me and bit the shoulder of my coat before falling off and wiggling into the underbrush. I'd still never been able to figure out what it was. The experience of being able to explore this place completely alone will forever be my most cherished memories. It was truly a strange and magical place. Sadly, the last I heard, they managed to get the funding to restore it, and it's now a historic site again, gift shop and all. It's a shame. It was at its most beautiful in disrepair. Out hiking fairly remote trail. Going a weekday, so I'll have it mostly to myself. Following along a creek bed. Spot something up ahead. There's a nude blonde man walking through the ankle-deep water. A large black dog is keeping pace with him along the bank. Dog spots me and starts growling. Start apologizing for catching him. Just smiles and gives me a wave before continuing up the river and behind the next overgrowth. Back in 2010, my brother was in the woods recording a video by himself. We lived in a pretty rural area, but there are a few houses kind of close. And while he was talking to himself or whatever, he looked and he saw someone standing behind a tree and looking at him. He took off and sprinted back inside. Another time, my brother was recording again outside at like 7, 8 p.m., and far off in the distance, you could hear someone scream as if they were being murdered. You could hear the scream in the video playback, too. Another time around 2010 to 2012, my brother and I were standing outside 10 or 11 p.m., and we heard legitimate tribal chanting in the woods. My woods back where I used to live were a public dump back in like the 1940s and 50s. So there was a lot of cool old bottles and stuff you could find. Pick related is the woods. My village was built on the outskirts of town for miners to live closer to the coal fields. Now, and when I was growing up, it is a strange combination of natural looking woods and ponds and old abandoned industrial infrastructure. If you look carefully or dig about a bit, even in the middle of some trees or a field, you'll probably find some old ironwork or stone structure. 
that used to be used for the mines or railway. It's now gone, but there's still a path roughly where it was. Anyway, when I was probably around eight or nine, we found a spooky abandoned house out on the disused mine land, which is just miles of slag heaps and dirt with a few small wooded areas. Great to explore, now popular with dirt bikers, with no windows or doors. A good quality stone and brick house, but the stairs and top floor were gone. No decoration or furniture, just bare brick. Whenever we would find it, I didn't really know the way around. Not sure if any of my friends did either. It would just be a random adventure each day. There would be a load of porn mag pages there, or spread out on the piles of bricks just outside the front door. The house is gone now. I've been back to where it was after moving away from the village for my teen years, and then coming back. I wonder who the fuck was wanking over scraps of porn mag in an abandoned house by the slag heaps. Two stories. Neither are particularly scary, just had odd creepy feelings about them. First is, I'm in a public park, walking a trail. I get to a point where the trail changes from an open, plains-type area to a forested, closed-off one. The park itself was pretty quiet, and the canopy makes the area look shaded. It runs next to a creek. Actually pretty nice. Anyways, I'm walking down this trail, and I see three men ahead of me, coming towards me. Mind you, the trail is quite narrow, like a small sidewalk. The first is a skinny, tweaker-looking dude. He's twitching and moving around, talking to himself, in an almost annoyed way. Kind of like if you were explaining something to someone in a stern way and said, I told you X, Y, and Z. The other two are less memorable. One was average, the other was a taller, fat, but powerful-looking guy, bald with a beard. As I came towards them, he said something like, Oh, Jesus. I guess maybe embarrassed or annoyed that I saw his friend like this. Anyways, there was just a feeling of tension as I passed him, and once we'd both passed, we both looked back at each other at the same time and held that look for a few seconds. I'm a small guy myself, so if they wanted to do something bad to me, they definitely could have. No one was around. The second story was recent, actually. I was on my grandparents' property, and Grandpa reported that he'd seen a bear in the yard last night. It ignored him, apparently digging and interested in something in the ground. I felt an odd urge to go check out the back of the property the following day. They have guns, but I didn't bring one. The property stretches back about half a mile, and the woods were very quiet that day. Near the very back is a pond. The property is shaped like a long rectangle. The house at one end, the pond at the other. I stood around, and just listened for anything. Very odd, scary, but also a peaceful feeling, knowing it might be out there as well. Saw what looked like a hind paw print, and left. Me and my cousin found a place in the woods, where it looked like a dwarf used to live, but their house eroded over time, leaving behind only silverware and metal kitchen stuff. I was young and stupid and thought, yeah, sure, maybe dwarves existed thousands of years ago, and I'm looking at the remains of one of the homes now. All this stuff was at a weirdly small scale, and twisted and bent in weird ways. It was all in a big ditch slash trench, and I vividly remember seeing an oven door with one of those twisty metal handles, and a window on it with the bars in the middle. The door was just sticking out of the dirt in the trench wall, like the earth buried it, but only partially. We never found the spot ever again, and I remember that day feeling strange. There's a small forest close to where I live. Some friends and I used to go there on our bikes since there's a trail going through. We found a weird looking place and found a shrine to Virgin Mary. It was dead center in a small clearing with some wooden benches around it. We spotted this big ass hole a couple of meters behind the shrine. Turns out, the fucking thing was approximately 10 meters deep, and halfway through was a large metal sheet. The woods got dead quiet when we started heading back to our bikes. We heard loud crashing and shaking coming from the hole, and we start booking it. To this day, we have no fucking clue what's in the fucker, but still, a very heavy feeling to the place, and not in a good way. 
I found a mag swipe key card nailed to a tree on a trail along a ridge line that's off main trails, overlooking a valley where there's an old growth forest here in the southern United States. Found a very shiny chrome bumper, but no car, no path near it, and in a nature preserve. Used to find those porn mags in the woods, but lately I've been finding weathered, abandoned Bibles. One time was having wood sex with girlfriend on a log, going well. Then I heard someone 50 yards away shout, Yeah, okay. Phonemes sound very similar to some Amerindian indian language greetings. Weirded us out at the time, but nothing else happened. Since then, I say that when I see deer, they don't immediately run off, but start to do the cat ears, head bubble, look around, and then easily walk on. Sometimes I come across those odd clearings in the woods where you can tell that the place is special. It takes a certain kind of determination to keep the woods at bay when you're that deep, to only let grasses and weeds and small rocks remain. I thank whoever for the opportunity to visit and apologize for my misunderstanding and mistakes when I stumble. And then I show celebratory wonder at the ingenuity and cunning, especially if it's just a natural agreement among the planets, fungi, and animals to grow that way. We used to fuck around in the woods near where I lived. We each had a walking stick a bit longer than our arms, wingsman, and we would go out on the highway deep in the woods and stand near their tree line with our arms all hung on the poles like a scarecrow, standing at the edge of where a car's headlights would reach in the pitch black, perfectly still, looking down and angled slightly towards oncoming traffic. When cars passed, we would turn in unison with the light source. Quite a few people audibly hit the gas when we turned. It was good fun. Eventually, a tight-ass ranger working the area would come by, and we would run back home through the woods. It was kind of fun, like a game of red light, green light with his flashlight. We would wait for a car to pass to cover the noise, and sprint if his light wasn't pointed in our direction. He never caught us, but always gave us the stink eye next time he saw us in daylight hours. I reckon a lot of the spooky shit you see in the woods is just bored folks having a laugh. Then again, people are the scariest thing in the woods. Found a black garbage bag triple wrapped. Thought it was odd and we only found it because of the smell. We knew straight away it was something weird as fuck. For us, anyway. Neighbor pokes it with a stick, I poke it, and we take turns poking it until the bag rips and maggots and guts begin spilling out. It was either a whole decaying pig with no arms and legs or the torso of a portly gentleman with poor skin and a stomach full of fly larvae. We never said another word about it and just went home. Not sure why. Anyone else ever see upside down trees in the woods? Like a tree that was cut down and then placed upside down, so the roots form a sort of table. Back in the 90s, I used to hear from hunters about these upside down trees they would sometimes find. Supposedly, they were used by Satanists or some shit. I also remember a police officer at our school claiming to have found some. I just wonder if any other Anans remember stories about upside down trees in the woods. This reminds me of something that happened to me. Never heard anything else like it. Be me. Going camping with some buds. Let's call them S and P. First day is fine except for an odd smell hanging in the area. Kind of like raw sewage mixed with copper. Mixed with the scent of asshole sweat. Night falls. We're all sitting around a campfire. Trading swigs of Jameson's. When the smell comes back. Slaps us in the face like a fat bitch twerking on her period with a leaky asshole. Gag.wmv. Here's something circling our campsite. Whatever it is, it's big. It's got to be nine feet tall and built like a defensive lineman, only with backwards legs. Still haven't seen it at this point, though. Friends are scared, but I'm cool as a cucumber. Got my PKP pigeon egg at the ready, plus a sidearm. So... I'm ready to go Rambo on this bitch. Suddenly, S goes out to take a piss. We tell him to be careful. 30 minutes later, 
he hasn't returned. Starting to get worried. About to go check on him, when suddenly, he comes back. Only, he looks off. The rustling around the campfire is gone, but the rancid asshole smell is worse than ever. I ask S if he's alright, because he's kind of twitching. He asks, are you alright? Something seems weird about that, but I shrug it off. Figure he's just tired. We all decide to go to bed, but S keeps trying to convince us to go into the woods. Me and P say fuck that and go into our tents, while S hangs out next to the fire. That night, I hear P scream, but I think nothing of it because I figure it's a bad dream, and I go back to sleep. When I wake up, both S and P are gone. I wait for a couple of minutes. When they don't come back, I drive up to the ranger station and tell them my friends are missing. Guy literally looks at me and says, If I were you, I would forget you ever knew your friends. Do as he says. Never went camping again. Eventually, S showed back up in town, but he was never the same. P is still missing to this day. Fucking cliche as shit. This is my first post, so try to be nice. Be me. Be about 16 to 17. First real girlfriend. First time for the both of us, for a lot of things. I'm saying this to stunt and also to give you some context as to our bond. I like to take walks at night and LARP like Macmillan. Live up in the Appalachian Mountains. One night, I'm getting ready to go out. Get call from my girlfriend. She somehow knew without me telling her. Hey, Anon, could you stay in tonight? I've got a bad feeling. Running your wish is my command dot X. Paraphrasing, of course, but I stay in and play video for the night. Have really weird dreams at night of bad stuff happening to me. In the morning, I go for a walk on the trail that I would have walked at night, and I find a huge corpse of a bear that had been really fucked up. Get her roses that day. Sometimes I hike after the sun has fallen because I got started too late. Here's the weirdest things I've encountered. 1. Some kind of reflective eyes following me for a minute or two from the woods along the trail. I don't think this was anything other than an animal, but it was easily the scariest. 2. Some animal making a sound that sounded exactly like a cabin door creaking open. And 3. A coyote or mountain lion or something screeching. The sound was so loud and unpleasant and different from anything you normally hear. I can easily understand why people would think it's a witch or a demon or something. It was not like a howl. It was a screech. I live in Scotland, and I've had more than my fair share of weird experiences in the woodland, both paranormal and not. Found multiple fairy circles, some made from sticks and stones, some naturally formed from mushrooms growing in circles, way out in the middle of nowhere. Once found an old crashed car in an area, too dense with trees for a car to even enter. Entire car was infested with ants. While checking out an abandoned mansion in the woodlands, somewhere in Ayrshire with some friends, we all had the feeling of being watched. When leaving the area, one of my friend's jacket was physically pulled back, as if grabbed. And this one is the scariest to me, though. B-15. Exploring woods with friends. Find a collapsed tent in the middle of the woods. Assume it was teenagers drinking and they abandoned the site to run from police, so we go to check it out. Getting closer, we find a large wooden structure made from various planks nailed together. Looks like one of those crosses they strap people to in BDSM. Friend picks the structure up at one end and yells, pulls back, and his hand is covered in blood. We rush over assuming he cut his hand, but he didn't. The entire top end is coated in old blood. Scared now, we open the tent. Hammer, saw, and a hatchet inside. All of us shit bricks and run away. Never tell the police. <laughs>